Hello there YouTube, just wanted to give a little update on something. Um, this printer right here is what I'm working on for my school, hence the sticker. The other sticker. It's an old BFB that I was able to get. My administration building over my school got in this. But uh, they didn't know how to run it, apparently. Um, when I was doing some uh, expecting when it came to my class for me to fix, um, there wasn't any maintenance and the nozzle got clogged. They assumed that there wasn't enough heating going on, so they cut off some of the nozzle, uh, the installation for the nozzle, but that wasn't it. Um, what happened was there was a clog and filament wouldn't go through. Plus, they shorted out the uh, heating elements in the process of trying to strip off the installation. So, I have this MK8 extruder right here. And it's been working quite well for me. Well, for testing, that is. Um, I temporarily have the original bed, bed plate off so that I can install a uh, aluminum bed. It should be coming in tomorrow, I believe, and I'll get that drilled in and fastened into the plate. Um, the point of this uh, video is that uh, I got this uh, E3D heatsink that can go right into this MK8 right here without uh, having a holster onto it. And uh, I'll show you how you guys too can get this E3D heatsink into there easy. And do note that you are going to need a fan for this thing. Because what I've learned by experience is that when this thing is not cooled down as much as it is, or what it needs to, the heat radiates into the filament and it causes it to get glumpy at some parts and then swell on another and then cause causes a uh, cloggage within the tubing that in the Teflon all right uh, here are the supplies that you would need can tools of your choice Tef oh wait wait hold on Teflon tubing sacrificial and a, a bicycle part I'm pretty sure this came from an axle I'm not exactly sure what it is. It had the right threads for the extruder. I just found it in a box. If anybody knows what it's called, please let me know in the comments. And most importantly, an apple. I don't have any footage of me doing this, so here is the threading that I have going on. Thank goodness for me, this thing already had a hole in it just enough for the 6M tap so all I had to do was tap the whole thing through I decided to do the whole thing because I wanted to do more than one extruder with the heatsink and as you can see I just cut it down towards what I just needed you don't need too much just enough to screw it in there um, it is worth noting that you're going to need a little bit more Teflon than what you normally had so what I did was 48.5 millimeters of more Teflon on the sacrificial one so everything should be able to fit together quite nicely now and a little tight okay that does it for this video um, the heatsink works great I'm just going to get this thing back onto this printer and uh, I do plan on doing it for the conduit printer was to be debated Still, if I just to go with the original one, I needed this because I needed to extend the way it is from the mounting plate on this originally downward. But it's a good upgrade if you want to keep things uh, cooled and uh, stable. So, um, yeah. Um, do tell me what you think. Leave a comment if you would have done something differently. Or... If you have any more questions on to what this is, so um, do leave a comment if you 
have any questions. Mm -hmm. If you liked it, give it a like, disliked it, do what you must. There's a button for it. YouTube put it there for a reason. Your opinion matters. So, uh, see you guys in the next one.